Comfy, lad. Yeah. I still I see no changes. <laughs> Wake up in the morning and I ask myself, is life worth living? Should I bless? <laughs> <laughs> right, fuck it, we'll get straight into it. So welcome to the Bit Podcast. Uh, I am Jay Bell with the big co-host Owen Levesley and today we are joined with Big Jansen Tergit, uh, ex Turkish International International Rugby League player. Yep. Done a bit at UFC, uh, UFC, done a bit at Hull FC, yep. done a bit at Donny, done a bit at Salford. Yep. Also... I want to see you captained England at under 18s. Yeah, so um, under 17, under 18s, England Academy. Fuck yes, and then also now coach, still coaching Westall? Um, I'm still involved at Westall. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was sort of a thing to get me back involved with the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I started playing again, so. Yeah, I mean, Mark, like. Matthew and Jones, you know. I, uh, I know Jansen though is the lad who once slept at my house and then I said, mate, can I have some eggs for breakfast? I was like, yeah, mate, help yourself. And he had all <laughs> fucking 12 of my eggs. And then my mum kicked off at me for fucking giving out all 12 eggs. Yeah. <laughs> just that in the kitchen, just making a fucking mess. What was it? 12 egg onwards? I think, I think, I think you made nah, dippy 12. eggs. I think you made dippy eggs or something. I think there was about 10 left. <laughs> And uh, your brother was downstairs just making cereal <laughs> after that, so I thought, I'm going to use like six to make some scrambled eggs, and I think I made like fried eggs and dippy eggs for the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, then um, obviously in, in that <coughs> period between coaching Westall and Salford, went fucking on holiday, was having a bit of a rough time with Salford and the club and stuff like that, decided to just have a, fuck it, I'm getting out of here. Yeah, and attempted suicide. Yeah, in that was com com comatosed. Yeah, so my injuries. I think the extent of my injuries was, um, broke all the bones in my face. Uh, broke my left wrist. Um, my spine. Uh, I think it was L one to L five. Fucking hell. broke. Yeah, bro. Fuck it. Did you break? Did you break like the hardest bones to break? Did you break your your hip bone as well? Like so you really had crest or? My um, pelvis was snapped in half. Um, yeah, my lower spine, um, and then. Do you have something in your throat as well? If you remember. Yeah, so yeah. To breathe, so, we breathe. Yeah, um, that was. It's called a tracheostomy. That so, if you get put, if you get comatosed, I think or. If you if you know if you can't breathe, they put that in and that breathes for you. So, you know that was keeping me alive basically for the prolonged three to four weeks. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like obviously when it all fucking went off, like the 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 whole world fucking stopped for a second. Didn't really like. I remember all the support you had, everyone fucking. I remember all the shit with like getting the money to get you transferred over and all that stuff. Yeah. Like you had to get airlifted over and all that stuff. Like it was amazing the amount of people that fucking got behind you for that. And then you say you was coming to us for a month. Yeah, I think it was about. Three and a half weeks. Fucking hell, yeah. Four weeks, something like that. Good yeah. kipper. Fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair play, though, because you, you couldn't tell today. You look fucking strong. And yeah. You couldn't tell, and you fucking broke. But you've, actually, you've actually been back playing, haven't you? You've been back playing rugby. You still yeah. do a bit of boxing now. Um, I played for West Hill last year. Yeah. Um, like we were just saying about started off, you know, coaching, just, you know, I was getting a feel for it again. I wasn't at the weight, you know, I, I've ever played at before. And, you know the, you know the setup and stuff like that is different to what I've known for almost ten years. Well, you, yeah, you've been in professional sport, God, since I've known you. What was that like? Since you was about fucking fourteen. Like, um, I think I started LFC scholarship under elevens, under twelve. Yeah, yeah. So um, when you say not the same way, lighter now or yeah. And so I was lighter at the beginning of the last season. You know, from me being given the okay to play again, um, I think I was. I think I started playing at about nine, 93 kilos. What did you used to be? I used to play at between 99 to 103. But then obviously, you know, the professional game is different to the amateur game, but, it, you know, it's easier in some ways, a little bit slower, but it's also harder in some ways. You yeah. know, you get some, fifth, you know, 18, 20 stone blokes. Oh, mean, mate, yeah. Eating whatever they want all day. Big, muscly lads. Some of them, you know, let's say, I can imagine that the, uh, you know, the testing levels are as <laughs> on top as they <laughs> yeah, are. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, other levels, and I mean, you know, it was it was physical. And it yeah, was tough, yeah. and, you know, as much as I was trying to um, 
put, put up a little bit of size on and get back to my playing level, you know, focus on my fitness as, and, you know, trying to re redisplay the things that I could do uh, in my in my specifically in my game, you know, skills and stuff like that. It was diff- it was hard. Yeah. You know, How long hard. after a coma was that as well? So that was the coma was um, May twenty nineteen, and then I was playing. You lost a lot of weight though, as well, didn't you? And obviously, yeah. in the coma stuff, mate. God, I remember like see, I remember seeing the photo in in using Barrow Boys. Yeah, you're, you're well, like I was di- still in hospital then. But, you were um, still in hospital then, was you? You know, thankfully, like like you mentioned, just to touch on as well, the support I had. Oh yeah, yeah. not just from you know people that you know if you ever needed support, you'd expect it, but from people I thought, wow, well, I'd never expect. Yeah, yeah. The help to the extent that I got, and you know, from the people, you know, I can't, I'm really grateful for that, and you know, I can't thank them enough. And but yeah, you know, whoever you know. Collectively, they set that Barrow Boys thing up. But I was still in hospital, but they said, that, you know, they'd let me leave for, like, I think it was a half a day or something to go, and then I had to be back in by a certain time. But yeah, yeah. it was emotional, but it oh, was also yeah. nice. But, like, you know, I had a lot of anxiety, I had a lot of uh, overthinking, you know, things like that, because it's the first time I'd seen people, obviously, apart from my family, in, in little chunks. But then you're going back... It's my first time going back into the real world and, you know, mixing with people um, and you're thinking, oh, what are they thinking? You know, how do I look to them? You know, because I want 102 kilos, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Super League, you yeah. know, professional athlete now. I was somebody that's been um, through depression, self-medicated with uh, drugs and alcohol and attempted at his own life, broke a lot of bones in the body. I'm looking like a different guy. I'd, yeah, yeah. I'd lost, I think I went down to about 74 kilos, so altogether, like... It's a lot of weight, that. Nearly 30 kilos. Yeah. Um, and this was... And you were under and too lean, isn't it? Yeah. Not like, no, not yeah, fucking fat. Either, yeah, so... Like, no. Under and two, and I could probably play in 80 minutes. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, dropping all that with the breaks, with the surgery... I probably was unrecognisable to some Yeah, people. I bet he was on a load of medication as well, but he's had a ton of pain, like... Yeah. God, could, could you even, like, move your fucking face when it first started? Like, obviously, I got operating on stuff. Uh, I could, yeah, but obviously... Um, like, obviously, you, 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 you like, smash your jaw, didn't you? Like, all your teeth and all that stuff. Yeah. Fucking had to get resorted and all that stuff, like... Yeah, so... It's fucking it nuts, was just man. Some, Yeah, it's not Some fucking... Some state, that. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It's one of them. There's... Uh, things going on with your body that are used to moving or feeling a certain way and then, you know, you wake up and working differently or Actually, not you know, like, I don't think I've ever asked you that, Jensen. Like, what what yeah. was that like? Like, so obviously you've, you've done the attempt. Yeah. I, I, I don't assume you remember anything from there to waking yeah, up. Or do was your count? Kind of, was, there, was there, like, bits where you'd wake up, your eyes would open mm. for a couple of seconds, you'd go back to sleep? What, or was it just a straight... Bang, done it, wake up. <coughs> I remember up to the point of uh, stepping off the building. Yeah. And then my next collective group of thoughts is um, as I was being transferred on the airfield, on the stretcher, onto the... You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Onto no the, getting lifted onto the air ambulance. You know, I'm not laughing because that's funny, but I'm laughing because I remember, I think there's was about... Um, Three nurses and two blokes, and just trying to lift, <laughs> lift, the, lift the big dead weight up, and you know, like uh, I just remember it being really warm. I was covered up to like the top of my chest with like blankets, stuff like that. And I do remember my mum saying to me that, um, you know, there was worried because I think the timings got uh, mixed up a little bit for how long I was going to be sedated for. And then that's when I started coming round, and obviously this is my first memories. <clears throat> I just remember looking up. And it being really warm, and then I closed my eyes again, and then I could hear like Spanish talk, um, and I could, you know, you've been on a, if you've been on a stretcher or something like that before, you know what it feels like, and yeah. like I kind of knew and could feel and anticipate what was going on. I knew I was being lifted into, you know, I could see that there was airplanes around and stuff like that. <clears throat> and anyways, you know, I remember it being a struggle getting lifted on. And just got pushed, and it was a really narrow, like a narrow cargo area. You know, nothing to like uh, 
you know, as if you're walking down a nice three by three island, yeah, right yeah. There, you know, it was, it was <laughs> small and I was just against the window and I remember directly there, there was a, um, a window and obviously my arms were strapped down, I think, to avoid being, um, falling over or anything, you know, moving on. In case you do a big fend, in case you come. <laughs> yeah. Or oh, maybe muscle spasms, you know, yeah, something yeah. like that, anything. Um, and I just remember, like, opening my left my left eye and I was just, like, looking out, out the window, but I could still feel the heat. And um, then I remember hearing my mum's voice. And uh, so she, I just heard her get onto the onto the plane and she said, um, she said, oh, I don't want to see, I don't want to see, and just walked. Past, oh, went in, straight yeah. into the cockpit, and yeah, obviously. Then, the next memories after that was waking up in Hull Royal, sat upright in Hull Royal. Um, so you, so you, like, oh, so you flown back to Hull Royal from Spain? Though. So I'd flown like, back there. Did yeah. you not go to a Spanish hospital or not? Yes, that was where I was in the uh, the coma. So I was oh, in Spain shit, for, right. and then you got flew back when you woke up. Yeah, so I think whenever they decided, you know, to fly me back. I think it was into um, Humberside uh, Airport, is it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And then I think I got transferred to Hull Royal. <coughs> and then, yeah, so that was my next memory. So it was like uh, stepping off the building, being moved from the stretch on to the um, emergency air ambulance, and then waking up in, in Hull Royal. And then... Fucking hell, was a lot of time. And how long was you in the coma? A month? Yeah, so between them. So that month where you're in a coma, is that just empty? Yeah, nothing like nothing. that. It's just like a fucking... Oh, yeah. Just must have, you know, been switched off. And but I remember things like my family telling me I was responsive. Yeah. I was responsive, so... <coughs> Maybe arm movements or yeah, yeah. whether it was blinking or, you know, certain things like that. You know, did did they um, did they have to kind of find out like whether he was actually responsive like it wasn't brain damage as well obviously how did like yeah how, when did they tell your mum and that kind of stuff like oh, don't worry he, he's injured but he's not brain dead yeah um, I can't remember on a time limit but obviously by the time they'd flown over and stuff like that I was having this conversation the other day that um, my stepdad had said um, oh we need to sign that they said to them, my mum and my stepdad, we need to sign this straight away. And they like, they read it through, and um, I think the costs and stuff like that was already racked up to like £60,000. Okay. Is that because um, you the Spanish hospital? Yeah, but then, you know, they got in touch with the um, the British Embassy or something like that and asked for some legal advice, and they said, you know, don't, don't sign it because that's one of the things that they'll do, they'll say straight away, uh, it's going to be this no and that. Um, but yeah... Imagine how many people have been done over with that. Yeah, yeah. Because of course, that's the first thing you're going to say if you're not going to seek advice. Um, so, yeah, where was we? What was we going uh, on? So, it was memories, memories, yeah. So, like, your your memories of, like, going through that coma and all that stuff, then it's, like, um, finding out that like, you wasn't actually, like, brain dead. Yeah, I so you were still functioning. How, how did they find out? I know that they'd been told, I think this was possibly when... Uh, there was in the Spanish hospital that oh, I'd, I'd, I'd been tested on and there was no internal bleeding and no bleeding on the brain, which... How the fuck? How the fuck? Yeah, yeah. You know. that, that, that's it. Like, we were uh, just having the conversation, weren't we? Like, you yeah. snap more or less everything in your body, but your brain's not been damaged. That's fucking... <laughs> but because of that, like, imagine, imagine if you was 20 kilos lighter, like, would you have just splattered? It must yeah. have been... It must have something to do with how you've landed though and everything, on not it? Surely. It could be a, you know... An accumulation of a lot of things, um, mm. you know. Personally, I believe in a in a higher power or something, you know, greater than myself. Yeah, giving me a giving me a chance or yeah. a second chance at life. Yeah, yeah you for would. a start, um, and then you know, I think to be thrown in with a mixer, you know, definitely. Even though I was going through depression, I was suffering with things. I I wasn't making great lifestyle choices. You know, due to certain things going on, and you know, within that, um, I always trained hard. Like that was my thing. I was gonna know? say, yeah, like, like, should we go back? Like, obviously, because what you did wasn't just a. You didn't decide on that day it was gonna happen. No, it must have been an accumulation. Was it? Was it an accumulation of things, or was it like a? Like, did you have these thoughts before? 
Um, like, does um, it start back when you was at FC? Does it start when you was at Donny for a bit on due registration? Or was it all kind of just when you was at Salford? Obviously, it wasn't just the rugby what was affecting yeah. I assume. I assume that there was lifestyle yeah. and... Yeah, so it was probably, you know, a build-up. Um, it was a build-up of maybe the past two years, 18 months, things like that. Um, and, and it probably will have started from, uh, you know, from the rugby performances you know you might be thinking you should be playing and you, you know you get you don't get chores this week and then you know how you deal with that or how I dealt with it how i probably should I say or oh, maybe didn't deal with it you know I'd turn to all right well I had playing you know it might go out on one of the weekends um, and then you know you're back in training and stuff like that and you you know you feel like you're doing really well cracking on and then you don't get another opportunity um, when you feel like you you know you deserve it of it, and uh, you know even times like if you're in the last year of your contract, it's been known that you know clubs can. It's quite harsh for me. It's quite harsh for me, isn't it? Especially it's a, to like younger. It's a cutthroat game. What, don't they tell you about if you're not getting a contract? Don't they tell you like halfway through the season as well of your last well, if year? You, if you're out of if you're out of contract for the end of the playing year, so say your contract's up at the end of. 2023, it'll actually be up by, um, I think, the September time because you start pre season in uh, November. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. so end of October, but then you start pre season in November. So that's when the contract runs. Um, and then, you know, I think they can let you know up to three or six months before. So obviously, as a professional athlete, if you're in the last year of your contract, you're not really getting played, but you think you could be playing. And I'm not talking about my situation, but just on a whole spectrum. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's without it already being a, you know, a cutthroat sport that's putting a lot of pressure and stuff stuff like that with external factors. Like, it's really difficult to obviously manage that. Yeah, the thing is, I assume it's your, yeah. your, your identity as well. It, like, from the outside in, it always, always, always has always been kind of your identity. I remember you was the face of Sirius School. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Mate, like, it might not be still yeah. there now, but he was the face of Sirius School and Sirius Rugby, weren't you? Yeah. Like, you've always kind of had, you've always been a work, work hard and athlete, hard working athlete. I've seen that from the fucking start. You know what I mean? And that, I assume that because rugby was your identity and you are getting picked, it, it, it can be. I don't know if the words demoralise it. I imagine it hurts. I imagine it hurts. It used to hurt me when I used to play the amateur game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, for anyone, you know, whether you're playing amateur or, you know, the top of the professional elite level, like, nobody, people say you play it for fun, but if you're not getting picked, then you're not playing, so you're not having fun, are you? Yeah, you know, yeah. you want to be playing, and when it comes to it being your livelihood, you know, you need that. Some some people might have a mortgage to pay. Some people might have... It's oh, mate, it's a lot of fucking pressure, isn't it? If you're not food playing... Food on the table for the family, you know, yeah. there's a lot of other reasons. And if you're finding out to the nearer that, you know, towards the end of that year, and there's a waiting time and you don't know, am I going to get contract? Are they going to say, oh, we're thinking about it, but we're not going to? Or are they going to say, we don't want you? Like, you have to make a decision for you as much as you love the club or you love the sport and, you know, you love your family and you need to love yourself and your own mental health more and kind of... Go down the right route. It's not like you're you're uh, you're working a nine to five, or you've got your own business, or you know you're working a trade or something like that. And it's like, oh well, I'll leave that company and I could go work in a call centre. I, I suppose you are your own business, aren't you? When you're a rugby league player, you are your own business. It's like the way you handle yourself, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like if you don't handle yourself very well, you might you might make you lose that contract or so on. Yeah, and and that's definitely you know the point I was leading to. It's. You, you sometimes don't feel like you have other options and, you know, players will get... And that's where the agents come in to help, you know, look and stuff like that. And it, it really comes down to performance and if you've not really been getting that opportunity... You see it all the you know, time, though, don't you? You see, like, fucking 40-year-old rugby players who've been professionals for 15, 20 years and then they sign at fucking... Whitehaven or something. Whitehaven and, and they're fucking 40 years old. And you're like, why is he still playing? But, like, yeah. poor, half of them, poor bastards, are probably fucking skint. Yeah. You know I mean? I mean, like, it's an hobby as well, isn't it? You enjoy it. It's a crack, I can imagine it's a fucking top crack with lads and that. Yeah. They're obviously, but thankfully, I'm not in that position. And yeah. I don't know truly what's uh, the ins and outs of what they're going for. They might just love the game. But mm. 
also as well. Like, um, yeah. I suppose, it, I suppose, well, for you, to... like, so if you was going for it, there was that pressure there. Was it, was it a kind of like, what's next for Jansen? Like, cause absolutely. Because you're always thinking, like, yeah, shit, what is next for me if I don't get the contract? Like, rugby's been my life since yeah. you was fucking, what you said, you said you was like now when you started, or? Uh, when I started rugby, I was five, I think. That's it. It's, it's rugby since you was five, do you know what I mean? It you, is, know? you know, to some people, and definitely me at that time, it is all you know. Yeah. And then, you know, part of you when you're going, you know, you're going through the academy years and stuff like that, you're thinking, oh, should I do something else to have a backup? But then yeah, if but I do that, you probably once forgot what you got. You what, sorry? You probably once exactly. forgot what you got. So if you take a little bit of your focus off that, then are you truly giving yourself a hundred percent? That's, that's I think. I think. I think this got explained to me once. It's like if you keep putting so much effort into so many things, you're only going to make millimeters of progress in each one. Whereas yeah. if you put your eggs in one basket, you're going to skyrocket. And that's yeah. what you did, mate. Playing international, playing fucking all that stuff, captain in Turkey as well, you know what I mean? Like yeah. You hear that all the time, though. You hear people say to like athletes in whatever sport, make sure you're studying or something as well. But it's like, I can't, mate, because yeah. you have to you have to train this much. Yeah. If you're training this much to get where you want to get, you can't, you can't fucking study as well. <laughs> yeah, I no. mean, not real, realistically. No. I think um, in the first few years of, of turned professional and full time um, with the first team at Hull I'd done a, a PT course um, I think Ben, ben did it <laughs> yeah, first he did, yeah, he did. Um, yeah so it was like level 2 or something like that yeah, but yeah. I mean I was you know you, you think you're always around the sport you're always around the gym you know that's something you would enjoy but in the back of my mind at that age you know I'm a young lad, I'm playing first team yeah. in and out every other week. Um, you know, I've just captained England Academy, like, I don't need no yeah. second, I yeah. don't need no backup plan because yeah. I'm going right to the top and I don't think that was, I, think that's an I don't think trend. that was me being um, ignorant to it not happening, but I was just fully confident in my ability and my, you know, training ability. And, and you just, you just captain fucking England, mate. Like, yeah. you're the captain for your age group in England, so like, you had a good stint as well, didn't you beat Australia that year? Is that when you beat Australia? Yeah. yeah. I think we won the first game and lost the second or lost the first. You one played against, who was that guy who was killing it now in the NRL? Uh, Latrell Mitchell. Yeah, Latrell Mitchell, yeah. Really? There's yeah. a few good lads that play NRL. Um, I think they even play in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. So, obviously, rugby was, was a big good. stress. What was, was that then causing other stress, like other things to seep out into your life or was you just having overstress at the time being that people you surround yourself with or what yeah. was the other leading factors again like I said it's probably an accumulation um uh toxic relationships with friends and you know past girlfriends um was one of them uh and then you know at the, at the time you know family issues yeah things like that and when I moved to Salford obviously I was going through that process of finding a new club, which I'll be honest, I didn't really want to do, but I knew that it was getting close to that point, you know, the cut off point, like we said, I'm probably going to have to. Um, and, you know, by doing that, I'm moving, you know, two hours to Manchester, um, being away from my family all the time. So I go from seeing them almost every day to, you know, excuse me, a couple of times a month. Yeah. yeah. And then, I suppose it's quite scary though. Like Hulls, Hulls, like we just kind of said, it's like a village, isn't it? Everyone knows yeah. everyone. Everyone knows everyone. I suppose you go to Manchester, you just you're used to fucking random blunt that plays rugby. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, especially from uh, my perspective, it was done really fast. Uh, the movement from Hull to Salford, um, it was done really fast, and you know, it was something I wanted to do, and I was enjoying it. I wasn't, you know, I was really enjoying it, but I think. For me to uh, take it all in and stuff like that, it probably happened, you know, a bit too quick and it was too overwhelming. And, you know, by the time it had everything had hit me, I was kind of like, you know, oh shit, you know, I'm in a bit of a bad situation here. You yeah. don't really know how deep you deep you are in it until you're like. Fucking hell! It's not just one thing. It's yeah, two, yeah. three, four. Yeah. You know. Did you feel like you just spinning a load of plates and just candles all just dropping around you? That's or? a good. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, and it's like, 
if it was any one of those things, you'd be like, you could probably get, you know, even two or three, you could maybe yeah. have dealt with that. But, you know, with, like I say, a lot of them going on at once, it was causing a lot of stress, a lot yeah. of pressure. And, you know, I couldn't and I definitely didn't handle it. You know, I didn't have the keys, I didn't have the knowledge, I didn't Mate, have the what tools. You, how old was you? 20, 22. 22, yeah. You was there no one 22. in rugby, rugby clubs that help with that? Or is that um, no better since? Or? They have... They, they do have player welfare managers, um, and you know I've dealt a little bit with those. Um, it's not enough, though, is it? I no, guess. I mean, even if you was totally honest with with the club, with yourself, I'm sure you could probably lead towards that help. But then there's that thing again, you know. Do you feel like as a, as a rugby player, you've got to be that big ad man? You've got to have that e- like not he's no way ego because ego is looked as negative, but like. No, I'm a, I'm a fucking hard bloke. Like, um, I don't need that help kind of thing. Like, I just need to crack on. I do. I, I won't really look at it from that point of view. Um, I think it was more from the fact, one, not really understanding that I was probably going through what I was going through. Like, yeah. you know, if you've never dealt with depression and stuff like that de- before, I don't what, think you could just wake up and be like, yeah. all right, that's it. What, was, what was depression now. for you? I, I, I always feel like when people do talk about depression, I, I, I don't know if people actually feel the same thing. Yeah. Does that make, if that makes sense. Like, Yeah, I'm sure it affects different yeah. people in different ways. Uh, for me personally, um, you know, not wanting to get up, not wanting to, you know, do things that on a day-to-day I'd love, I'd enjoy, I'd strive to do. Um, and then once I've got up and got ready and, you know, eating, <clears throat> then you go training and, you know, you should be going somewhere where you're enjoying and not enjoying that. And then coming home and, you know, you should be following your diet or should be going to recovery and you just don't want to, you lose all motivation, all self-motivation to do anything productive or anything that's making you better and you're choosing choices. You know, even something as as subtle as if you're sticking to a, an athlete's diet, like I'm thinking, I'm feeling, you know, I don't feel to, up to the weather today. I'm going to, eat whatever I want and then it because it's a, you know because that's in your mind it's not just maybe one day it's over a period of time yeah it kind of so accumulates you, you, be, you slowly you're coming off off track yeah um you're coming off track and then um yeah uh, you know towards the towards the you know before it's bedtime you know quite a while before it's bedtime wanting to go to sleep yeah yeah just sleep and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be awake. I don't really want to be in that environment. You know, I want to be at home. I want to be with my family. I want to be with people that I'm close with, stuff like that. Or are you just wanting to sleep to try and, like, forget about it? So yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's how so, it looks like to So me. how w- was you masking that stuff with, with other things, be that drugs, be that friends, be that fucking sex? I mean, like, we've all got our vices, you know what I mean? Everyone's got a vice. What, like, what was your vices to yeah. kind of escape from that? So just finishing off what you said about, um, you know, uh, so you said about um, oh, being that big hard yeah, yeah, being that big hard environment. Yeah, yeah. It it wasn't. It was more like I probably didn't want to. I probably didn't understand what I was going through, and then you know when I did, I probably wasn't accepting that. Yeah. Um, Could people recognize it around you as well? Like we kind of people saying like, "Just no, you are right." Oh, really? No, so this is what I'm saying. Ah, right. Okay. Once I kind of knew there was a problem. Then you mask it because you, the embarrassment right. comes up, and you, you, you're not. I wasn't doing it because I thought I was so big and brave, but I was doing it because I was embarrassed, and yeah. I thought if I told the male friend group or you know the uh, the lad environment of a um, professional environment, I thought I'm going to get humiliated, or I might be, you know, not in favour to play and be pushed out of the team, and then I thought if I go to my um, you know, my close-knit group, my family and close friends, I wouldn't want to be a burden on them, so I wouldn't want to give them the stress because they're like, oh, you know, that's an issue and they've got to worry about me. And you know, Was, was you be... thinking at the time that you wanted to kill yourself? Like, um, or was that just no, a fucking so that was, one that was, thing when you did it? Yeah, like, so, you know. like, obviously I had low thoughts. Um, and that's the... Is this all right? So yeah, it's keep going, yeah, son. Gets better. Yeah, so no, I, I, w- I didn't have those thoughts. No. My thoughts at the time was, you know, low, more like I'm fed up with rugby, you know, I'm fed up of living out of town away from my family. Um, and that was what kind of alluded me to understanding I was becoming depressed. 
Um, but not acknowledging them thoughts and being able to dismiss them is what probably invited the self-medicating. And, w- and was these thoughts every day? Was these um, every other day? Was it kind of like some days it coming on and off? Yeah, so on and off, a bit like a wave, really. Um, yeah. Sometimes, like, when you're enjoying something, you'd really enjoy it, you'd be at your highest highs, but then you didn't really have mediocre days. If you was feeling, you know, down, you'd be feeling, like, super shit. Um, I, think, I know, think what you said there is all it, about, like, not being able to talk about, because of embarrassment, I think, or, like, that's it, because you might you might come out, you're depressed, and then people go, what, you got to be depressed about? You're fucking yeah. jacked, you fucking do this, you play rugby. And it's like, some people just don't understand that. Do they? I think Adesanya, he, he he got his belt, he won the UFC title, and then became depressed. Yeah. And a million people around the world be like, what the fuck have you got to be depressed about? Do you know what I mean? But yeah. you just don't know, so, like, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors with some people. And I suppose that was the same for you, but you hit it very well. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with that, you know. Um but, you know, if if you said to someone, oh, what's your job? And they reply, oh, I'm a professional athlete. Um, oh, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm depressed. And then that's, <laughs> for <laughs> some people, that's confusing. But yeah. at the end of the day, everybody's uh, everybody's only human. And I think that's it as well. Do you know when people say that? don't I'm know what they're going through. That's to you as an athlete as well, though. Them. Being a professional athlete is just normal, isn't it? It's like they look at it like, fucking hell, you can't be yeah. depressed as a professional athlete. But... You've been an athlete forever, so like, there's nothing new to you. So it's not like yeah. it would be to them. Do you know what I mean? That's it as well. I think when people go, oh, "I want to be like Johnson Tiger," or oh, "I want to be like Owen Levesy," like to to be uh, to be Johnson Tiger, to be Owen Levesy, you've got to live that life. And I don't think they understand what's got gone into your bodies and brains up to that point. If that makes sense, like yeah. you two have put in so much fucking hard work throughout your whole life, for them to judge you on that one sentence of "I'm depressed." They don't have a fucking clue what you've been through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They don't have a clue, like. But they just look at you. You're a professional athlete. You're jacked. You haven't gone out to be depressed about. I don't know what rugby was like, but an athlete lifestyle can be quite fucking bland. Yeah, can it? Pretty lonely, I'd say. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, although you get, I'd say the positives and the you know the good benefits are like really high, and you know they are in like the the limelight, so to speak. I think the negative ones what they might not see and what you are having to keep to yourself or what people don't see behind closed doors. So they don't think that goes on because they don't see that. But, you know, if the club goes and wins at Wembley twice, you know, back to back, then that's, you know, you must be loving your life. But, you know, from another perspective, if you're in that team and you're not playing and you feel like, you'd, you know, you should be in that team or, you know, you've got other things going on, then you're not quite feeling that same buzz about it. Do you know do, what I mean? Do you feel like some fans are still like, oh, I don't know if they're the right words, fans, but do you feel some, still think some people are quite um, unknowing or ignorant to actually what, like, they just think rugby league players or professional players are just like these angels. <coughs> but they actually, not all of them are angels, are they? Like, you remember when everyone used to go out wrong position, they'd all just be fucking booted up every weekend, wouldn't they? Do you know what I mean? Like, um, So you're saying about behind closed doors? Behind like, closed doors, yeah. I mean... Just I, I thought you just said then it is made me, making me think of one thing that um you know whenever you speak to like an old school fan or someone that follows the game or the team or whatever they're always like yeah well it's not like it's not like we used to you know we used to work forty five hour week at work and then we'd go play <laughs> on the weekend but like it's a totally different game yeah, it's, it's a totally different, different environment game. and yeah, like of not of people not knowing that just made me think like. I think some people really don't even understand what the athlete lifestyle is now, what sacrifice goes into it, what, you know, dedication, determination goes into that. You know? It's risk as well. Like, it is risk as well, isn't it? Like, you are, like, it only takes one big bang and that could be your career over or something like that. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it is a risk and it is a sacrifice. All these athletes now that, you know, people will see him on Instagram, people will see him on, on Twitter or on the news and stuff like that, watch him on Sky Sports and see how well they're doing, but, like, they won't see the hard stuff that goes on, they yeah. won't see that they'll be missing family parties, that they'll be missing nights oh, out with them. Social with media makes it fucking friend. well worse, though, as yeah, well. Like, they get to see you for 80 minutes a week if yeah. you play every week. And if you can't play your fucking best every time. Yeah. So if you have a bad game, you've got all these fucking idiots online giving you loads of shit when there could be like loads of problems that have resu- like built up for you to give that shit performance but they don't give a fuck about that yeah. Did it's you like you've played that? shit once so 
I think especially now, just speaking about what you said then, these, you know, idiots on the line, how easy is it to interact with people online now? You know, you can have, people have thousands of followers, Twitter, you can speak to anybody. And, you know, as much as you, you know, especially myself when I was an athlete, you don't try and look into that and stuff. Because at the end of the day, is their opinion valid? Probably not. Um, but it does affect you. And if you do see things like that, it's it's difficult. And yeah. like you said about, you know, they don't see what else is going on. I know a lot of lads that play every week and they're carrying big injuries. They're getting steroid injections. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, just yeah. to be able to play, they're wearing strapping all the time and like yeah. the body's in bits. They might not even train the full week just so they can play. Yeah. Like people's, you know, a lot of fans maybe don't understand the sacrifice that I, actually I mean, is made. Like you were saying there about sacrifice, I remember like, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but there was a lot of lads that used to come back to my, my when I lived with my mum, my mum was a nurse and nothing against my mum, she was just trying to protect everybody. But they all used to come back to my house, leave the growth, <laughs> growth hormone at my house and they get injected after training. This is academy. This is academy. Like there was like kind of encouraged to do this stuff, to be a part of it. If you want to be a part of this game, you've got to do certain things. Like 17, 18 year olds taking human growth hormone, like, that's that's fuck. It's fucked, isn't it? It's fucked. Like, it I couldn't afford it. I'm gutted. <laughs> 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 I was at college, mate. I couldn't afford it. It was like fucking two hundred, two hundred quid or something. Yeah. Was that when you was getting the bus or going on the bike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, like that's it. Yeah, there is like a lot of stuff like what people just don't know about, do they? Really? Yeah. So like back to what you saying there. So, what was you masking your depression with? Like, um, you know. Just what most people, I think, uh, are doing on a week-to-week -week basis now, anyway. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. Norm it's yeah. the normality now. Um, yeah. Going out, drinking, and then, you know, becomes a, not just using, but it becomes abusing. And then, yeah. you know, the same with drugs when I was struggling. Yeah, I was going to say, you say, say self-medicating. What, what what does that mean? Like, um, to someone like me who's ignorant, who didn't, what does that yeah. mean? So, I'd describe self-medicating without actually acknowledging what you're going through or your problems or your issues, you know, you're choosing to dismiss that, forget about it and give yourself a, a fix of, um, you know, is it serotonin? Should we say serotonin? Yeah, I think serotonin. I think serotonin, yeah. you know, whether some people might uh, self-medicate by eating a load of junk food and that gives them that and, you know, then they'll crash. Yep. Some people might have a load of drink, stuff like that, go out, party, you know. Man was, you know abusing drink and then you know turn into drugs yeah and that makes fucking anxiety and everything worse than that like it makes you you know in the time being it makes your problems go away but then you know for the days to come it probably yeah it's like, it's like that what, what goes up must come down kind of thing like yeah. and if you're already down it's just gonna push you even more down yeah um but you know self-medicating I, I think it can be different on it you know depending on person is, is that, is that people that, might be addicted to, you know they can be addicted to scrolling on oh yeah TikTok. yeah people yeah, people are like right. like you look at now the, the vices there's vices all over it there? there's porn there's fucking social media like you say there's food there's drink there's drugs there's people have got people have just got some outlet somewhere people are, some people are addicted to training that was what i was going to touch on you know before before my depression and stuff like that i'd definitely say that um through to some insecurities in myself, I was probably addicted to training and, yeah, yeah. you know. Mate, yeah, you was always training. Do you remember when you came to Proactive and did that box jump on the jet block? <laughs> no. Mate, <laughs> the, we, do you not remember? You taught your shin blades, you taught your shins off. There was just blood everywhere. Was it the old wooden boxes? <laughs> Mate, we used to have these old jet blocks. There must have been about six foot. He walked in, no warm up, just did a, did a box jump, hit his shin off the end of it. So, That's all right. Just split the end of his shin off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he was always training, he was always doing bits, he was always doing extras, like he was always doing some yeah. doing pipes every day. I've done a bit. <laughs> yeah, you have done a bit. <laughs> <laughs> done a bit of arms. Um Yeah, like I say, it was, you know, probably probably one of them things that I used to I used to turn to and um, you know, along with the negative things that I'd probably said are the reasons and my lifestyle choices for playing me on the team in certain you know, certain weeks, but also I was, I probably did overtrain, you know, yeah. I'd stay there, do extras, or, you know, I'd always try and be the first there, uh, and the last out, um, you know, looking up to people like, uh, as I said, did you have, did you have like around you, did you have like, yeah, the people was, you know, the people there to influence you was, 
you know, next second to none, mate. it was yeah. class. And, you know, I really was focusing on the training and stuff. And But then on a night, I'd, I probably wouldn't rest. I'd maybe go do another session or yeah. you know, I'd go for a run or, you know, do some boxing on the weekend. And then when you come to training, oh, look, we've got fitness and then your scores might not be great. And people are thinking, oh, well, he's even not putting in much of an effort. Oh, he might have had an every weekend. And, you know, in reality, it was I'd probably just trained and my body was a bit hit and a bit fatigued. But, you know somebody else's perspective, you know, perspective's quite a different thing, you know, it, one thing can look different in a lot of ways, and I mean, yeah, you're right, yeah. people was probably making assumptions, when in reality I needed to maybe just hold back on that, uh, you know, at the start. What was the, uh, so so you've gone through, like, all these struggles with, with the uh, knowing where you're going to go, self-medicating, so what's the hair that breaks the camel's back, so you go to a beefer? Yeah. You, you I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, he was in a relationship at the time or was he just broken up or something like that? That's what I don't really know. I mean, it was like, you know, on and off, it was a just a toxic relationship, really. Um, and you thought, fuck it, let's go to a beef with the lads kind of thing. Yeah, or? I mean, I'd uh, been dismissed from Salford or it was a mutual a mutual agreement. To leave. Was this when that... Cool Cash was there, or no? Was it Cool Cash, or no? No, he was somehow involved, yeah. but he wasn't, uh, he wasn't there. Yeah. And then, yeah, you know, I've just um, got on the phone with my friends, and they'd said they'd booked a, got a holiday booked, so, you know, I wanted to jump on it, recoup, um, get away for a few days, enjoy myself, come back and start again. I'd had my agent get in touch saying a few clubs was interesting. One of them was Super League. Amazing. Um, and then when I was out there, he was ringing me and stuff. Uh, and, you know, I said I'll get in touch with him. I think I spoke to him the, the day that I actually did it as well, in the morning of, and I just said, uh, all right, thank you, I'll, you know, I'll be in touch. That, that shows you, though, doesn't it? Like, you've yeah. literally been in contact with signing for Super League Club yeah. on the same day. Same day. It shows, doesn't it? it doesn't, yeah, yeah. Some, like, when your mind's not there, it's not there, is it? Yeah. You know, like I said, best way to describe it was you know, an absence, you know, you don't feel like you're living, you don't feel like, you know, even when everybody else is happy and stuff like that and you feel like you should be happy but you're not and you think, you know, I'm laughing but in your head you're thinking I'm, I'm not really enjoying it and, you know, yeah, yeah. it's a real difficult, lonely, uh, absent place to be. As you say, like, is it is it just there's nothing in your head or is it like a, there's like a constant fuzz in your head? Is it like you just want to be out of here or... Like I said, you know, it's waves. Yeah. Um, and when it's good, it's good. And, you know, that was probably one of them bad moments. I remember being with my friends and laughing and stuff like that. Like I said, you don't feel connected. You don't feel a connection to anything. You just feel isolated, you know, away from everything. Just space, really. Yeah, yeah. There's that, there's that thing called, like, persona disassociation where it's like you do feel like nothing's real. You don't really remember who you are. You don't really know who you are. You can't remember you like you can't really remember the shit like you was into and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, did feel, feel. I mean, yeah, I could definitely relate to that. Yeah. Um, on top maybe of that, I have a dis a shite. Shite. on top of that, um, probably a distortion of reality. Yeah. Um, and you know, due to the time being there, uh, x amount of drink and issues with drugs. Uh, I, I went through something called. Uh, Drug induced psychosis. Right. So that's shit. Know, right. Okay. So that is a distortion of reality, and you're thinking things are happening. You know, like people say, tripping. Yeah. So is this on a come down, or is this? No, mid, this was. You're on it. This was whilst I was, uh, yeah, st you know, using the drugs and. So you, so you're out drink, at a party. Sleep deprivation was one. Yeah, I, think yeah. I was up for a, uh, you know, a couple of days. So. And then, yeah. So what led me to doing what I did was. Um, even though my mindset was depression and stuff like that, like I didn't do it because I thought, you know, I've had, I've had enough and I want to end it. Like I would thought what was actually, what what was going on in my head wasn't actually happening. Yeah, yeah. So it was, Fuck. you know, it was. Just, so, you know, it's. So what was what was what, mind, was, what was the psychosis episode? If you don't mind sharing it. Um, I'd rather not. No, that's fine, mate. That's totally fine. But on the, off the back of that, mate, like yeah. you have been genuinely given, you've genuinely been given a second chance. Like you should be dead, shouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, like, what what would you fucking like kind of tell people now? And 
like you, 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 you can share some fucking lessons. There is some people probably now who are feeling very similar, felt very similar ways to you. What kind of advice would you give them? Do you know what I mean? Like if you, not everybody gets a second chance to do, do you know what I mean? Not yeah. everybody gets a second chance. So they do, there, there is a saying, I can't remember who's by, but it's like every man has two lives. There's the one where he realizes that he only has one life. That's when your second life starts. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. it. You've obviously woke up and gone, fuck, I've been given another chance. Be that yeah. higher power, be that look, be that chance, whatever. What would you kind of say to those people? You know what I mean? I mean, I can't really give advice because I don't know each person's, yeah. you know, thing, but definitely the lessons I've learned was I needed to look into myself and, you know, get some tools to understand how to how to deal with things. Like, you know, did I think I'd never drink again? I didn't actually know if I would. And, you know, if I drank, would I feel, you know, would I feel so bad that, I'd want to take my own life again, and you know that wasn't the case. Oh, yeah, and maybe, shit, yeah, I didn't see. I don't think about that stuff. Maybe, maybe right, just yeah. an, an understanding of tolerance, an understanding of, um, you know, I I, I went through, um, did some suicide prevention course, some mental health first aid training, um, different things like that, just to uh, extend your knowledge of what depression is, of what anxiety is, of what different things are. See what you can relate. You know, you might some stuff you might not ever use or need to. Some things you might be like, well, no, I've, I've actually felt like that. So if I feel like that and it says you should do this, I can try that. You know, things like being in the moment. Like I said, I was really detached from reality, from life. I'd say, um, being in the now, uh, cold shower. Yeah, yeah. Fair. If you get a nice cold shower in the morning, you can't think of all you know anything else other than. Wow, that water's really cold. Like, <laughs> where's my can't, diddle? <laughs> <laughs> you can't think of anything else, you know. Yeah, yeah. Things like, you know, going out and uh, they say like grounding, don't they? So going out, being with nature. Yeah. Um. Things like that, you know. Uh, Has there been anything what's been like made dramatic difference in your life? Be that choosing who you're friends with, or I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but like, yeah, is there anything that's really, really like, oh fuck, like that that stood out a lot to me. Um. I think probably uh, being more open with my support network, you know, my close ones, really not taking advantage of, you know, the people around me, my family. Like, without them, I won't be, I won't be in the, you know, the lifestyle, you know, the, the thing that I am today. I think, you know, especially your loved ones and your close ones, people that genuinely care about you, whether you have everything or you have nothing, they won't treat you any different. Yeah, I think. I think, you know, being grateful and uh, not taking them for granted would be my best one. Yeah. That's sick, I mean. Like, is that, has, has your relationships intensified since since then, like, with families? Like, yeah, like I said, obviously, they only knew the happy Jansen, the, um, you know, playing Super League Jansen, the loving training Jansen and everything like that because, you know, the other side that was wearing a mask to me I didn't want them to know that sad. For my for my own for my own benefits and for theirs really, you know. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't happy with it. I was probably not like I say, I want I didn't want I want not I want wasn't wanting to acknowledge that part of me. So that was something that I kept hidden. Um and you know, now do, I just try do, and be so, like, I mean, like does it ever creep book. back in? Does it ever creep back in on her? Does whatever creep back like in? Like the the dark side of Jansen, do you know what I mean? Does it I ever mean, does it ever creep back in on her? You know, we're just living on a, <laughs> we're living on a moving rock through space and time <laughs> continuum, mate. Like, yeah. you, kn you know, you have different thoughts every day. I think they say you have like tens of thousands of thoughts. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you're right. Every day. I mean, one of the things I've learned through uh, therapy and through reading and stuff like that, you are, you're not your thoughts, but if you have one and you right think, well, that's a little bit negative and I don't think that's really a, uh, justifying where I'm at, I'll acknowledge it, but I'm not going to, you know, interact with it. And you kind of dismiss it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would say, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's like a lucky dip. You might have a bit of an angry f angry thought. You might have a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a, you know, negative thought, things like that. And, you know, they're the things now I've got to pick and choose. Am I going to interact with that? Am I going to dismiss it? Am I going to, you know, 
move on. Yeah, yeah that's class. Class. Should we move into the big Q and A? I've got one though. <laughs> oh yeah, you go. How, how, how <coughs> big was the building? Uh, it's fucking. It's I think made it was, a mess here. Though, yeah, right? I think it was the top of like a uh, the roof of like a three story car park. So fucking hell. Yeah, it was. Four all together. Yeah. yeah. Mate, it, like, it, like, Jeez. it's amazing, like the fucking, like the surgery and all that stuff. Like, you come out, like, and you you Crazy played a game, bro. you played a game of, we played multiple games of rugby now. Crazy, bro. Yeah, like that's fucking mental. You're is still it? Still playing rugby now? Or you, um, shall enough? Huh? Well, I've just finished the season with Westall, uh, playing amateur. Um, well, before I even played a game, I'd had a few contract offers and saying, "Excuse me, can you come down? Can you do medical? Are you going to be fit? Can you play again?" And I was. You know, my answer was, yeah, I can play again, because in my head I was always believing that so that I could train hard enough to get me back to that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I yeah. had to believe it because nobody else did. Yeah. Um, Is and that something you want to do? Yeah, I mean, I ain't quite finished with rugby yet in, in the fact that I wasn't the one that said I've had enough. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It was kind of being told, oh, you can't... You know, you, you're going to struggle to walk again. You might not even walk upstairs. So to be, you know... It's fucking ridiculous. Right? I felt yeah. like, right, rugby's being stopped now. And I didn't want that to be somebody else, else's decision in their hands. I wanted it to be my own. Okay. And I want to keep striving and moving forward and get back to the highest level and keep enjoying it. Because that's, that's been the biggest thing with rugby. Like, I was playing at the highest level. Was I enjoying it? Truly, no, I don't think I was enjoying it to the full extent. Whereas I've just played a full season for Westall at an amateur level where I'm paying to play rugby. And yeah. one of the matches, having a race to down the pan. <laughs> I've done that <laughs> at Westall. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> spewed it back out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's totally different. You know, I'm paying to play. And yeah, yeah. I was enjoying it. And that was a, that was a big factor of it, you know. Like I say, I'm going to keep, you know, Keep carrying on training with West Hull and uh, maybe look at uh, the other options that I've got. Uh, maybe sick of you say about the boxing match. Like that'd be that'd be fucking unreal, that wouldn't it? If you got a boxing match. Yeah, so I've I've been doing a little bit of boxing. Like before I was before I was given like the the you know green light to say um, you can you can play rugby again. All your bones are healed. X Y Z. Like I was trying to. Make sure that I'd still be able to be involved in sport. Although I was doing the coaching, I wanted to physically be doing a sport if it wasn't rugby. So I used to um, box a little bit uh, when I was younger. And then I'd never had fights, just training, really. Just bang me on Westall Park. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I thought, you know, that could be a good option uh, if I can get the OK for the head scans and medical, like... There would be no massive impacts on the body. Did you get that as well? Did you get the old claim um, for that? Yeah. Fucking yeah, hell. So. It's mental, isn't it? What well, the fuck? Yeah, Mad that, isn't it? Real, to real. be amateur, you don't need you don't need that anyways, but yeah. I've had the you know from the Mate, yeah, it's better to be safe than sorry, isn't it? Yeah. Miles yeah. better to be safe than sorry, yeah. Exactly. Amazing. Uh big Keelan. Does he know how to put furniture together? <laughs> <laughs> <Keelan. Yeah. laughs> Well, I'm actually always, um, I'm always fixing his fuck up. <laughs> I don't want, l not let anyone anyone know, but I do fix a lot of them. <laughs> Should we ask the one about the uh, the bionic dick on her? <laughs> <laughs> Is it true you've got a bionic dick from the surgery <laughs> and it has a vibration sitting on it? <laughs> I'd say yeah, if you have. <laughs> Is that um, is that no answer? I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good one, actually. What's the dast daftest rugby story you've got? Daftest rugby story. Oh, Some of them I don't really want to say on camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tough that because I bet most you don't want to say on camera. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah could you replace names so, oh, with there's numbers? There's loads I'd love to say on camera, but there's loads that could be incriminating <laughs> people or you know, ruining relationships. So. <laughs> um, Any PC I, ones, be... right? Okay, <laughs> let me think. 
I can't. I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. Do you know what, mate? What, what, what inspired you to keep fucking going? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's that's one for me. Like, what inspired you? What, what motivated you to keep going? Like, the the, the 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 trend is now is to say that motivation's not real and you've just got to action and all that stuff. But yeah. some have kept you going. What, yeah. what was keeping you going? Uh, one, it was kind of all I knew. So I thought, if I can't do this, then at the minute, I don't really know much else. Yep. So I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the other one that was that, you know, for somebody to have just seen my position I was in at that time, I didn't truly believe that they could say, you can't ever do that without actually trying it. So yep. even though I had like maybe a 10% hesitancy of like, you know, what if I can't? The other 90% had to be like, you've got to be training and you've got to be thinking, like you genuinely believe that you're going to be able to do what you're, you know, be motivated and got your ambition towards doing. And I remember telling people and like, they were like maybe laughing it off as if I was a joke, as if it was a joke and in my head. I'm thinking like, I'm being real serious here. Like yeah, yeah. I'm going to go back and I'm going to play rugby and, you know, I am going to play professional rugby league, you know, um, and the more, the closer it got, you know, ticking all this, uh, all the rehab sessions off, um, ticking all the meetings off, ticking all the scans off. And it's like, right, I'm doing a little bit of weights now. I'm moving. Fuck, I'm getting pain. Like, is this pain going to be forever? Am I going to be stuck with it? You know, oh, that pain's gone that I had. Yeah. Few how how fucked was you when you started lifting for the first oh, time? Mate. That body was fucked, man. Yeah, like, yeah, I was moving about, like, bad. that Iron Man off, like, what what you know for Wizard of Oz, and then like I have to put a bit of oil in him, like and he can't even move because all his. That's what I felt. like. I do remember yeah, though. I remember when you, like, I remember really, when you first really got moving stiff. your legs. I remember using using my gym at the time. When you, robotic, do you remember you were trying to when you were trying to run down the track and stuff like that? I do remember your legs was stiff, weren't they? Like so it was like you did quite a lot of, with Hatto as well, didn't you? Paul Hatto has been amazing, mate. Yeah, big shout out to Paul Hatto. Yeah, big shout out to Paul Hatto. Yeah, mate. If he if he didn't give me an open hand, I don't think I'd be. You know, anywhere near is where I'm at right and, now. And they literally told you you're not walking. So they said, you know, he might walk, but he won't go um, upstairs. Fuck. Yeah. No way. So, I mean, so your I man fucking getting would... a fucking one of those remote chairs in the, 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 the stairs. Yeah. And you fucking yeah. find out you can run up the stairs, you can do broad jumps up it. Even like oh, when I was going to the toilet and that, I had to have this thing because I couldn't even like bend my legs... No down. way. So it was like, you know what old people have when they can't do a full full squat onto the no toilet way. seat? So oh, like, shit. Mad, bro. Because no, obviously my legs couldn't bend to like that 90 degree was because it, of the keep, tightness. Was, of just being, her, was it just a prevention or was it like a... Probably a build up of both. I mean, yeah. I was taking 80 milligram of... Uh, what's that? Uh, what's it called now? Testosterone F in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's it called? The painkiller. Oh, like um, morphine. morphine, eighty milligram of morphine a day, Fucking and I was still in, hell. and I was still in pain for how long? So I think in hospital I was taking maybe a little bit more, and they said you shouldn't. You're only allowed it for Fucking four to six weeks, and I'd been taking it four months. I bet that took some weird off them. Well, this is a weird thing, bro. So like, I was taking this, and I had um, oxycodone and oxycontin. One of them's a uh, short tech and long tech. So one of it, tech it, and about half an hour to an hour, like, boom, zero, like, zero pain. I felt like if I had another one of them, I could probably do, like, an 100-meter sprint. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, the other one lasts for, like, it it, come, it takes longer to come on, a couple of hours, but it lasts for a longer period of time, maybe it's five to eight hours, something like that. I can't remember the exact. So I'd bang that midday to help me get to like the tea time and then I'd have a um, another one just before I went to bed but then I'm waking up every single night I was waking up once or twice minimum because of the pain I was in how bad are you talking pain unbelievable uh, <sighs> whole body as well so like the, the aches on my upper body wasn't that much because it was you know it was unscathed so to speak but I mean like the headaches and like the lower leg injuries on my back, like I couldn't ever describe that thing, bro. No, oh, well. And I was thinking, 
you know, nowadays you have an ibuprofen and a cup of paracetamol, you feel all right. Like I'm having 80 milligram. <laughs> That's fucking. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's fucked. And I'm in pain. I'm yeah. Thinking, wow. Like, so you're off all that stuff now? Oh, so just going on to what you said, to wean off it. Like when I was getting better and stuff like that, you know, over like a period of weeks, I was dropping it down. I maybe only have like one of each a day and then maybe only like one a day and then maybe only like one every other day. And then like, I think it was just one like weekend or one weekday I woke up, I thought, I feel all right. I don't need them no more. <laughs> just put them in a <laughs> cupboard and then I maybe had one every other month for like a few more months and it just stopped like that. But Amazing. apparently the, um, you know, they are, uh, uh, they're they're addictive because they're um, like heroin or something like that. Am I yeah, mixing that so up? Man, yeah. So did you not struggle with that? Like, was you able to just drop them straight away? Yeah, just because it was like as soon as the pain went, and I recognised that. I thought, well, why do I need to take them if I'm not in pain? So it just kind of stopped. Amazing. I mean, obviously as well, like you had you had a lot of success in sport from young <laughs> to the end of your career. Like, what would be your, like, I mean, this might go to a parent, this might go to a kid who's listening to this, like, what would be your keys to success for trying to succeed in a sport? You could maybe, I don't know, label that in free or however you describe it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, what would be the key to success in sport? Uh, just keep chipping away, like, um, keep doing the little things right. I mean, I was a, I was a late, you know, I was a late drinker, I was a, um, you know, someone that was always trying to do good, oh, not yeah. just when you're at training, but, you know, when you're not there, because, you know, they, they say, don't they, um, you know, they say, it's like the iceberg thing, everybody sees the, the tip top, but, you know, the big proportion of it is what people don't see, like we were saying about the sacrifice area earlier, sorry, like, I thought definitely my, um, you know, from, from a younger age, I sacrificed a lot and, you know, just worked hard. Think yeah, that's it, man. It's like that is literally like that's your message after time, and it? it's just there's not really any secrets, is there? You just fucking yeah. worked hard and done it for a long fucking time, and you stuck to it and consistency in it. I'd say, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You want to wrap it up? You got any questions? No questions, mate. I just want to say, fucking fair play. It's good to see you looking so fucking well after all all that shit you've been through, mate. Cheers, mate. Appreciate that. So that's Thanks what I've got. Rip your top off now and give it front double. <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to say, Jensen? Anything you want to close on? Um, no, I just want to thank you for having me on here. And, uh, you know, all of everything that I've spoke about has been real, raw, as genuine as, as I possibly could be. And uh, if anyone listening or, you know, watching, tuning in, if it can help one person, I mean... It's all matters, mate, Hopefully that's what it can do. That's and it. if anybody is struggling... Uh, um, feel free to drop me a message. I'll, you know, I'd, I ain't studied all the books, but I've had the life yeah. experience. Well, that's it, mate. You, you have, you have got the experience, the wisdom, the knowledge. So we appreciate it, mate. We appreciate Cheers. you coming. We appreciate Thank you sharing everything. And you got to say, what you got to say? You got to say, oos. You got to go, oos. Oos. <laughs> go, yeah, yeah, go. Oos.